The Roadmaster has always embodied luxury on a grand scale, and last year witnessed the rebirth of the classic Roadmaster, better than ever for the 90s. In the short time since its rebirth, the Roadmaster has received rave reviews for its ability to isolate its passengers from the harsh realities of the road. But the superior ride of the Roadmaster makes vibrations and booms more irritating. A service department's ability to diagnose and repair a vibration directly affects a customer's loyalty to a dealership. Using the systematic diagnostic procedure outlined in this program ensures that effective and timely repairs are made. But just what is vibration? Vibration is the repetitive motion of an object, the back and forth or up and down motion. If rotating components have too much imbalance or run out, they vibrate. Vibrations consist of three elements, the source or cause of the vibration, the transfer path that the vibration follows through the vehicle, and the responder where the vibration is felt by the customer. Vibrations can be classified in different ways. A first order vibration occurs only once per revolution of a rotating component. A second order vibration occurs twice per revolution of a rotating component. Using a hit or miss method of diagnosis, these vibrations can be difficult to find. Vibration diagnosis is a logical method of solving a vibration complaint. It begins with an accurate and complete write-up of the customer's complaint. And since many complaints of this type are of a highly subjective nature, vibration complaints should be classified as comeback potential situations. A comprehensive write-up describes what the noise sounds like and tells when and where it occurs. The vibration and boom worksheet in the service advisor's manual consists of questions that help to isolate the complaint. Then the customer's complaint is confirmed and expanded on during a road test. The manner in which the car is road tested depends on the complaint. Uh, for example, if the customer complaint is vibration at idle and drive, there is probably no need to road test the car at road speed. The most important factor to be determined during the road test is whether the vibration is related to vehicle speed or engine speed. If it is related to vehicle speed, the output shaft of the transmission, the prop shaft, and the rear axle shaft should be inspected as a group of components that are fastened together and rotate at the same speed. The following are characteristics of first order driveline vibration. The vibration may be torque sensitive, meaning the vibration is present or worse when accelerating or decelerating. The vibration may occur as low as 30 miles per hour, but most commonly in the range of 45 miles per hour and up. A buzz or roughness may be felt in the seat, floor, or steering wheel. This may be accompanied by noise, usually a boom or moan. In addition, second order driveline vibrations are usually torque sensitive, the most common complaint being launch shutter. Launch shutter can be felt in the steering wheel or seat from zero to 15 miles per hour, increasing in frequency as vehicle speed increases. Between 15 and 25 miles per hour, it feels like a driveline roughness and generally disappears above 25 miles per hour. Launch shutter is usually caused by incorrect U-joint working angles. U-joint working angles are related to prop shaft operation. As the prop shaft rotates, the U-joints speed up and slow down twice for every revolution. Drive lines are designed so that this acceleration and deceleration of the U-joints is canceled out. The rear joint is oriented so that it allows the power flow to fluctuate opposite of the front joint. As the front is slowing down or binding, the rear is speeding up or releasing. This creates the effect of one U-joint canceling out the other and results in a smooth, constant power flow. In order for the two U-joints to cancel the accelerating and decelerating forces, the two angles formed by the U-joints, the working angles, must be within one half of a degree of each other. In addition, the working angles themselves should not exceed four degrees. However, the working angle should not be zero. 
With a working angle of zero, the needle bearings within the U-joint don't rotate, causing brinoline and premature wear of the U-joint. The wheels, tires, hubs, drums, and rotors form another group of components that only produce vehicle speed related vibrations. The vibration from these components feels like a shake, usually in the steering wheel or seat. Wheel and tire assembly vibrations felt in the steering wheel are most likely related to the front tire and wheel assemblies, while tire and wheel assembly vibrations felt in the seat or floor are most likely related to the rear tire and wheel assemblies. In some cases, when a rear tire has an off-center belt, the car may wobble or waddle at low speeds. While they produce different vibrations, first-order vibrations rarely produce noise. An exception would be if the tread is worn irregularly or flat spots are worn into the tires, causing a growling or slapping noise. If the vibration is related to engine speed, the engine and torque converters should be inspected. First order engine imbalance can be felt as a shake between 500 and 1200 RPMs and as a roughness and possibly heard as a boom between 1200 and 3000 RPMs. The vibrations caused by engine imbalance may appear and disappear at different road speeds, but they always appear at the same engine speed. In the road test, you should duplicate the complaint and by operating the car in a number of ways, isolate the complaint. Use the slow acceleration test and the neutral coast down test to determine whether the vibration is vehicle speed related or engine speed related. If the vibration is engine speed related, Use the downshift test, the neutral run-up test, and the brake torque test to further isolate the vibration. The slow acceleration test is used to confirm the complaint. To perform a slow acceleration test, find a smooth level road and slowly accelerate to highway speed, looking for vibrations that match the customer's description. Then, stop the car and note the vehicle speed and engine speed at which the vibration occurred. Next. Perform a neutral coast down test. The neutral coast down test helps determine whether the problem is vehicle speed or engine speed related. To perform a neutral coast down test, find a smooth level road and accelerate to a speed slightly higher than the speed at which the vibration occurs. Shift the transmission into neutral and coast down through the vibration range. With the car in neutral, the engine and torque converter have been eliminated as possible causes of the vibration. If the vibration occurs, it is vehicle speed related. If the vibration doesn't occur, you would usually perform a downshift test. To perform a downshift test, accelerate on a smooth level road to the speed at which the vibration occurs and note the engine RPM. Then slow down and safely shift the transmission to the next lower gear going from overdrive to drive or from drive to second. Now, operate the engine at the previous RPM. If the vibration occurs at the same RPM, the engine or torque converter are the most probable cause of the vibration. Repeat the test in still lower gears and in neutral to confirm that the vibration is engine speed related. In some cases, a vibration may be sensitive to torque or engine load as well as being related to a specific engine RPM or vehicle speed. These vibrations can be the most difficult to diagnose and require additional testing. Many of these additional tests are described in the know-how reference manual. Sometimes choosing the correct test to quickly isolate the problem is a matter of using common sense. So, if the customer complaint is of a vibration at 30 miles per hour and the vibration can be duplicated by running the engine up to 1200 RPMs in park, the vibration is engine speed related and time doesn't have to be taken for other road tests. After road testing the vehicle, try and duplicate the vibration in the service stall. The vibration may be different, but it is easier to see the effect of adjustments on the vibration in the stall than on the road. After all, with many rotating components, it's practically impossible to completely eliminate the imbalance. But with work, the imbalance can be made so slight that it cannot be felt. 
But let's look at a complaint of a vibration or moan between 45 and 55 miles per hour on a grade with the transmission in fourth gear. Begin by verifying the complaint with a road test. While on the road test, perform a neutral coast down test to isolate the vibration. In this case, the symptom didn't appear during the neutral coast down test, so the vibration is vehicle speed related and the characteristics match those present with a first order driveline vibration. For that reason, inspect the prop shaft, making sure it is match mounted to the rear axle assembly. If it is, the orange paint marks on the prop shaft and pinion dust flange will line up. If the orange paint marks are lined up, check prop shaft runout. On the other hand, if the paint marks are oblivious, disconnect the prop shaft and rotate it 180 degrees. Now, road test the car. If the problem persists, however, remove the prop shaft and rotate it 180 degrees back to its original position and check prop shaft runout. The first step in checking runout is to make sure the surface of the prop shaft is free of excessive rust and free of dents. Also, remove any excessive undercoating. Then measure prop shaft runout in three places. Runout should be checked four inches from each end and in the middle of the shaft. To measure prop shaft runout, attach a dial indicator with a magnetic base to a smooth part of the vehicle underbody, close enough to the prop shaft so that the indicator button rests against it. Now, with the transmission in neutral, rotate the prop shaft by turning a rear wheel. If runout is greater than 40 thousandths of an inch, disconnect the shaft of the pinion flange and rotate it 180 degrees. Reinstall the prop shaft, making sure the prop shaft bearings are started straight and seated in the axle flange. This is important. You shouldn't use the retainers to draw the bearings into place. Then check runout again. If runout still exceeds 40 thousandths of an inch, replace the prop shaft. But Let's say we had different results during the neutral coast down test. Instead of reproducing the complaint, when the transmission was shifted to neutral and the car was allowed to coast, there were no vibrations or moans. And doing a downshift test on a level road didn't produce the symptom either. In such a case, return to your service stall and perform a brake torque test. The brake torque test helps in diagnosing vibrations that are sensitive to engine load and torque. Begin by blocking the front wheels. Then apply the parking brake and the service brake. Now place the transmission in drive and slowly increase engine RPM looking for vibrations that match the complaint. Keep in mind however that some vibrations may be created during brake torque testing that normally don't exist. Usually during brake torque testing, you would note the RPM at which the vibration occurs. In this case, the noise is coming from the rear of the car, suggesting an exhaust system alignment problem. If a roadmaster exhibits this problem, the first step is to make sure the muffler hanging clamp is stock. Some technicians have used an aftermarket clamp with limited success to try curing exhaust system vibrations. To cure these vibrations, however, stock clamps must be used and the following procedure must be followed exactly. Loosen, but don't remove the two catalytic converter intermediate pipe flange bolts. Next, loosen, but don't remove the muffler assembly clamp nuts. Then, align the muffler assembly by grasping the muffler and rotating it until it is parallel to the underbody as viewed from the rear of the car. With the muffler aligned, position the muffler hanger so that the blade of the assembly is positioned in the middle in both the fore, aft, and cross car directions. Now, while making sure the muffler remains perpendicular to the car's underbody, tighten the muffler clamp nuts. Finally, torque the catalytic converter intermediate pipe flange bolts to 15 pound feet and make sure the exhaust hangs freely. The brake torque test may reveal another engine speed related vibration or moan. On some roadmasters, the lower rear frame assembly may flex slightly when the car is driven between 45 and 55 miles per hour on a grade, especially if the car is equipped with a 2.56 axle ratio. 
To provide additional stiffening and solve the complaint, a frame brace that runs between the frame rails can be added. To install the frame brace, remove the lower bumper energy absorber frame rail attaching nuts. Next, install the frame bracket with the mounting slots positioned above the center line of the brace and upwards towards the car's underbody. Then, install and torque the nuts to 15 pound feet. There are some vibrations that are difficult to isolate and diagnose. Uh, for example, on some Roadmasters, a chuggle or shutter condition may occur between 45 and 55 miles per hour with the torque converter clutch engaged. It's more noticeable under load. This chuggle or shutter is especially noticeable on Roadmasters equipped with a 2.56 axle ratio. The chuggle or shutter occurs when the springs in the torque converter bottom out. This allows vibrations from the engine to be transmitted to the passenger compartment as a chuggle or shutter. The 220 pound foot damper spring in the torque converter clutch of the Hydromatic 4L60 transmission was replaced by a stronger 280 pound dampener spring in transmissions built after December 16, 1991. Transmissions with the new torque converters also have a new model code designation. A neutral coast down test indicates that this is an engine speed related vibration, but a downshift test and a brake torque test fail to reproduce the complaint. To diagnose a chuggle or shutter caused by the torque converter clutch, perform a special road test. Drive the car faster than 44 miles per hour making sure the torque converter clutch is engaged. Now, allow the car to slow to approximately 43 miles per hour. Remember, if the speed drops below 42 miles per hour or the brake pedal is depressed, the torque converter clutch disengages. Then, with the torque converter clutch engaged, crowd or apply light pressure to the throttle to induce the chuggle or shutter. It takes careful application of the throttle. Because if the throttle input is excessive, the torque converter clutch will disengage and the test must be repeated. To solve this chuggle or shutter problem, replace the torque converter. The replacement torque converter has a blue DGAF label stamped on it. Finding a vibration is frequently difficult and frustrating. A systematic diagnostic procedure that involves the whole service department helps to solve the problem, prevent comebacks, and enhances Buick's image as the new symbol of quality in America.